Um, hopefully you watch the pre-work videos. They're pretty good. Uh, tech with, with Tim guy. It's pretty good. Anyway, so I'm going to have a new folder here. I'm going to create a new file called index.js. And let's talk about node, right? So what is node? What is node? Um, I don't know if I specifically gave you pre-work on node. So does anyone have experience or a gut feeling about what node is? Is it a runtime environment? Yeah, so that's like the, the that's the answer you give at an, an interview when you're asked and it sounds impressive, but what, is that, what does that mean, David? It's where your JavaScript code will actually execute. Yeah, JavaScript code will execute where? At the server. Outside of the browser. <clears throat> Up until now, kind of, uh, we've only run JavaScript in the browser. And that was the original purpose of JavaScript. It only existed in the browser. And then I think in 2009, it escaped the browser and Node was invented. So they basically ripped out the V8 engine from Chrome and made it run in you know Windows operating system and Mac operating system and Linux, I guess, which is, I think, the same as Mac under the hood. Um, so... In the old days, you couldn't use JavaScript to write code outside of the browser, especially a server, because that's running on the operating system. So imagine how hard this bootcamp would be if we had to learn C Sharp or Ruby or Java, like a whole other language uh, on top of everything else. But we don't. The beauty is we can use JavaScript now because of this invention to run it um, with Node on our operating system. So that's the why do we care, right? We can use JavaScript to build servers that run on the operating system. So we don't have to learn a new language. Um, yeah. The other cool thing through a part of Node called NPM, we can triple dot. And what is NPM? What would be like the interview answer about what NPM is and then what's like the real, what it actually does answer? Node package manager? Yeah, so the interview answer is node package manager. And then what's like our actual, you're talking to a buddy and what, is no, what does NPM do for us? We don't get all of that nice code. <laughs> yeah, like we code. can download <laughs> other people's code. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time, you know, uh, every time. So it's beautiful, right? It simplifies a lot of stuff for us. So um, let's do some mock technical interview practice, right? Is anyone super brave? It's going to be easy. Or I don't know how easy it is, but not too crazy. And if you fail, nothing happens. Um, who do I know has used this already? Uh, Daniel, um, I want a function whose input is a number <clears throat> and whose output is a Boolean, uh, that tells me if the number is odd. And I want the function to be called is odd. So we'll talk about oh. this. Uh, well, I, I, we'll get into this in... When will we get into this? Most likely capstone, the real process I think you should use to answer technical interviews. But for this one, it's premature. So 
Um, um, so we could use something like a... Well, let's stub out. Let's do what's, what's called stubbing out the function first. So just write me a bare bone functions with the name. What do I write? Um, we could put a... Well, do you want me to like start writing out the function or just... Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's it stub out? it out just to get something on the... Okay, so uh, um, let's uh, declare it. So like const function or let function, which okay. works better. Uh, we can name it is odd. And then we'll give it a... Um, so we have an error though already. No const if you're using function. Oh yeah, sorry. Well, did, okay. So yeah, we, we could get rid of the word function or make a function declaration. And let's do function mm -hmm. declarations. So um, we put a, we can put a uh, parameter of num. Yeah. And then in there, we could probably use a modulus. So. <clears throat> yeah, that's exactly right. So if, if we could put an if conditional, like if num modulus two, I think is equal to zero. Return false, else return true. Yeah. <clears throat> and so Daniel wrote this function. How can you test his code? How can we invoke it and give it some numbers, Roman, to see if this works? Um, say is odd. Parentheses. Or maybe okay. And then here's the cool thing that we've never done before. I want to run this code, but I just want to run it like right here in, in my operating system. I don't want to have to use the browser. So now you guys all installed Node already. So we can just use the word Node and the file name we want to run right here. And this will run. And there were no errors, but there was also no console there was no output so what do i have to do to see some output uh monica uh console.log yeah so even though this isn't the console it's a lie it's a terminal right uh node is smart enough to know that's what you mean so now when we run this we see false which is what we expect right and then if we do one Here's another thing. It's annoying to save this and have to type node every time. So there's another application called node mon that every time you save, it'll rerun node. So now is odd true, 13 true, 14 false. Beautiful. So now the question is why did I make us write something like uh, so simple, right? Um, and so one of the functions of NPM is that we can download other people's code, right? So there's an NPM package called is odd, where if you were too lazy to write this code, you could download someone else writing this code. And does anyone know how we can grab someone else's code using NPM? You just do, um, it could be NPM is odd install or yeah npmi is odd but i'm thinking about this now there's actually one pre-step we have to do uh to download packages from npm first we have to do what initialize or something yeah first we have to uh create a node project and to do that we do npm init dash y and this will create us a single file does anyone know what package.json yeah roman you're on a roll package.json so this gives us package.json and that's it and then let's explore package.json a bit. Although right now I think it's gonna be pretty empty. Um, it took the name as my folder name, version, description, where's the entry point to your app? Like what's the first file that runs? Scripts, we'll talk about later. 
Um, we'll come back to this in just a second because nothing's important enough right now to dive into. But now we have an official node project and now we can download other people's code. So the code I want, let's pretend I was too lazy to write this and I see this is odd. So I'm going to install that. Uh, And then to use it, so um, another thing to talk about, there's two different systems of importing <clears throat> and exporting in JavaScript land, CommonJS and what is the other one called? ECMA, ES6 imports? Let me see the official name. He has six modules. Um, just recently, this one was used to be for Node, and this one was Browser. But just recently, somewhat, we can use the newest syntax, the syntax you of, you've already learned, in Node. But to use the newest syntax, we have to go to package.json and add type module here. And now we can, we can, uh, let me pause a second. When, after we ran, it uh, created a node modules folder. So let's take a look at that, right? After we ran npmi um, is odd. So what is in here? So I look at a folder. Now I have this code called is odd. And in the index.js, I can see their function of how they determined if a number is odd. This is really the code that we care about. It's pretty similar to our code, right? Same idea, modulus operator. Um, they're using the old syntax of exporting, but fortunately for us, <clears throat> we can ignore that and use the newest style, except you will see both constantly. So eventually you will have to learn the old model as well, is my recommendation. Um, but for today, at least, we can try to just use this is odd I wonder if we type it, if we can auto import it. No, it gave me the old style. Um, all right, so we can import is odd from is odd. And then we can run this with nodemon. And now we've used their function instead of writing our own. We've downloaded their code, stored as a node module, a package, um, a very simple one. That's kind of ridiculous, right? Um, but yeah, that's a little bit of node and NPM. We, we've already been using this a lot in React. It's just we're going to use it even more in servers and Express. Hey, Max. Um, yeah. <clears throat> when you downloaded that uh, or imported that library. NPMI is odd. Yep. Is the node modules is number. Did that come with it or? That's a great that? question. So let's take a look at our package.json after I ran is odd. Does anyone notice a new field? Yes, under for the de dependencies. Dependencies. This is going to be like the most important. Well, scripts is pretty important, but dependencies is one of our most important fields here. This is what our application, what code our application is dependent on from other people. And one of them is is odd. And it says the version here. But is odd itself is a program someone else wrote. And it's a node project and they have their own package.json. And they have their own dependencies. And what do we see for their dependencies? 
is number. So when, because we're dependent on them, they're dependent on someone else. It's like that logic chain, right? So we had to download is number. We're dependent on them. They're dependent on is number. So we need it as well. And then is number, are they dependent on anyone? No. Doesn't look like. And here's how to determine if something's a number in JavaScript. If you're interested. Does have any correlation or like, is that also going to cause problems or like, is just dev, I mean, dependency, the main one. Oh, if there's like a circular dependency or no, no, no. dev dependency, is that like, do people need? Oh, dev, dev dependency dev? doesn't matter for our purposes Okay. because yeah, dev dependency would be if you're working on that specific, developing that specific project, I believe. I don't think we need their dev dependencies. Uh, well, we, yeah, we don't because I didn't install Mocha or Gulp. So we don't need those. Yeah. You're going to see NPM a whole lot. Download a whole lot of packages. The way we build servers in, in itself is a package called Express, but that's, that's next week. I was going to say jumping way ahead. It's not jumping way ahead. It's in a few days, but it's next week. And today we still have spammer to think about. Um, okay, so questions on Node or NPM, or we can shift gears to, to Git. Uh, the other cool thing about node modules is they can be deleted. I can remove them here in node modules. And now if I try to run my application, my is odd, who has a prediction about what's going to happen. So I deleted the code that I'm dependent on from other people. What's going to happen? It's not going to run. It's not going to run. I have an error. Uh, can find package is odd. But then the very cool thing about NPM, how do we reinstall all the packages? NPM dash I. NPM I? Yeah. We just do NPM I without a package name. And it knows from package JSON what we're dependent on. And it re-downloads it. What is that package lock dot JSON? This is the specific versions you use, but there's never a time when you're going to interact with this. So you can ignore it. And if you delete it, I be I believe it'll just be repopulated. I think this only met really matters if there's very specific versions of things you need, but I'm speaking out of my depth because I've never had to interact with it a single time in my, uh, coding journeys. I've had to delete it before because <laughs> someone on Stack Overflow told me to, but I, yeah. So, um, so what was the, what was the, um, the command to install node onto a project again? It was NPM. To reinstall init. node modules. The command no, I'm about the is NPM in it. Why? You're talking about it to, to initialize a node project, it's npm init y, but to reinstall the node modules, the the code you're dependent on is just npm i. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the projects that we've been working on, uh, we've just been running npm i. Um, maybe this is a dumb question, but why were, why didn't we have to initialize node back then? We weren't using it. V or? did that for you. So when we did a V create, it already did all it, the- It created a node project. It created a node project and a whole lot else, but fundamentally it's an, it's like a node based project. Yeah. That's why I kind of said you've already been using node. You just didn't really know it, but now you're, you're getting a glimpse behind the curtain. Okay, cool. So if I wanted to, let's say in my, in spammer, I wanted to um, import some new code. Since yeah. it's, all this has already been created, I just have to do npm i and the name of whatever code I want. To yeah, maybe in Spammer, you want a good way to show 
show dates and you don't want to have to think about it too much, you can find a package that somebody else wrote, MPMI date and time in your spammer project, and then just start using it. I have no idea if this is a good one, but just as an example. And I forget, does this automatically also update our dependencies for us? Yes. When we do, you know, yeah. so we just have to import it at that point. It used to um, not. You used to need a keyword. I don't even know it, like save, or I guess I do know it. I think save dev, but we're spoiled now. You don't even need to do that anymore. I don't, oh, uh, well, say, no, I'm sorry. Save, save dev is a little different. That'll be if it's a dev dependency. Um, but if you just use MPMI, it'll show up as a normal dependency for you automatically. Like an, a one, a package I always use, uh, toast, I forget the name of it. React toast. MPM. So this will show little messages like, so this is code someone else wrote that we can use that you can just like show these little messages to your user. So when you're trying to edit a message that someone an hour ago deleted on spammer and you get a response from the server with that weird Prisma error, this would be a perfect case to, to show can't, can't comply with your, the server failed on your request. This message has probably been deleted by the original author, something like that. It'd be a beautiful use case. That's like a super bonus though. I didn't even list that as a bonus, but it, that would actually be a really cool bonus. I maybe should list that. Max, just curious, will we learn React testing library? No, uh, no testing at all in the entire course, unfortunately. Um, any other questions on Node or MPM? Okay, so let's switch gears to talk about talk about Git. So let's do the what and the why of Git, right? What did you get from the pre-work, uh, Monica? What's what's Git all about? Um, from what I understood, it like allows developers to track like changes in the code. Yeah. So I guess the technical answer is uh, version control, system for version control. But then the what does that actually mean when you're describing to your buddy? It, it does, does real good <laughs> saving your code, different versions, right? Um, so it's like if you use Google Docs and it's constantly like saving, although Google Docs is saving for us automatically and Git is definitely not. You have to do, you decide when to save called a commit. There's one other, I actually don't even think Git that, that's the main, well, that's kind of controversial, but there's another fundamental purpose to Git. Does anyone know what it is? Totally d independent of its saving abilities of code. Could it be just to collaborate yes. with other developers? Collaboration, yeah, is the name of the game for Git. So enables a few developers to, in the language of Git, we're gonna say push and pull, but just share code, stay up to date with each other. And then if you're both working on the same file, how do you decide what code you're keeping, what, what uh, gets thrown away? Today, we're not going to touch collaboration at all. Um, that'll be eventually before Capstone. We're going to learn the very... So next week, you're going to need Git to be able to deploy your servers. You have to use Git. Uh, well, Git is the way we usually use it. Maybe there's a way to not, but it doesn't matter. We're going to use Git. Um, so instead of Netlify, we're going to use something called Render but we need to be able to push to render or render is going to communicate with GitHub, um, which I guess we should talk about GitHub, right? So in the video, they stress that Git and GitHub are different. 
what is what is GitHub again, Victor? Did you have time to watch the pre-work? Uh, no, not really, no. Okay, uh, Jazz, any idea what GitHub is? Um, it's a remote storage for your saved code. Yeah. Saved for our repos, which is a uh, uh, which is our saved code. Our saved code. So Git is all local. So it's all it's making these versions on your computer, right? But what if you spill your your Starbucks latte on your laptop, and it it it's done the code you've been working on for years. So GitHub is a place where it's in the cloud, backed up for you. It's also what enables collaboration. It, I don't think collaboration would be possible if Git just existed. You need GitHub as well. But they are independent, although you don't use you don't really use one without the other. It's very integrated. Um, so how do we use Git? What's step one of using Git? I I have some code already. This Node project, I'm I'm determining if a number is odd, right? Some good code here. And I want to save this. I want to make sure I have copies of this. How can I tell Git, go ahead and it's kind of like make this a Git project or start create, create a system to track this project. Create a GitHub account, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's one step we'll have to do, but let's Wait. focus on Git first. I would... I don't know if my strategy is right. Like I would create the repository and then I would do a git init and then git commit dash M for your first commit and yeah. then do a push. Yeah, that's a lot of steps though. Let's do the first one. So git init. So what does git init do? Initialize. Initializes the, connection, the folder to be tracked by git mm -hmm. and creates some hidden git files that we don't care about that we don't have to interact with, but it does create like a doc git in your folder. Um, by git. So that's step one. Step two. So we talked about how we have to do commits ourselves, right? We have to tell, we have to tell git when we want to save our code. So right now I have this great code. I want to save. I want to make a commit. How? How can I make a commit? Commit dash M commit. and then just comment. There's a one step before we make a commit. There's like some Get busy work. Out. Yeah, okay. so we have to tell Git what files we want to add. Except there's some files we don't want to add. What are the files we, d we never want to add? Almost never. Node module. We never want to. Uh, we never want to add node modules. The the code that we downloaded from someone else. Why? It's too much. It's too much. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, too big, and unneeded. We but can just it doesn't belong to us, right? No, not that it doesn't belong to us. We we can use that till the cows come home. Uh, one thing too i think you can do it on git ignore well yeah that's what we're building up to but the why the why of git ignore so we don't want to eventually we're pushing this code online and if y your node modules might be like 100 megabytes it's just unnecessary to push that to github they don't want it so what you do is ignore that whole folder because remember we can easily just download it again with mpmi so it's just really unnecessary, all that traffic back and forth. I, um, I think GitHub will allow you to do it, but it's just, you just always ignore node modules. This is real. This is going real ahead. Uh, well, it's going two weeks ahead. What's the other files we definitely don't want to, can anyone think? Definitely don't want to track. The directory for Vite or Vite. Uh, 
Maybe the distribution file you're talking about. Probably. Yeah. But that's not that big a deal. There's something well, that would be a big deal. The uh, Maybe API key. Uh, I, I don't know. Probably. I... Uh, Usernames and password. Yeah, it's passwords. <laughs> it's like every day people are submitting their passwords to GitHub and it's just anyone can access it. It's all public. So you really want to hide passwords. So you want to git ignore passwords. Uh, eventually this will be all stored in a file that we call .env, but you don't have to worry about that yet. So how can we tell git to ignore certain files and folders. And Renata? You have to create a git ignore file. Create a git ignore file. So we come here, we do new file dot git ignore. And what did we say? What folder did we say we want to ignore, um, David? node modules correct yeah and eventually dot env but we don't care right now so we'll save that and now the cool thing is when i do git add and i'm i always use dot you're almost always going to use dot that means everything but it isn't really everything because git ignore will take precedence so it will add everything except node modules and that's referred to as staging this is like the homework we have to do before commit, which is our real save. And now to, so let me put here, we have to add dot or get add first. And now we have to get commit with a message. And the purpose of this message is to describe what you're doing but right now I'm not doing much. I'm just initializing a project, right? So I'm going to press git commit dash M for message initial. And now we have a git tracked project with one save. Um, but this is all local, right? And we can check out our commits with git log. And we see this is our our record of our git commit. But now this doesn't do me much good. Um, on Monday, you're going to have to actually push this to GitHub. So I want this same, I want a copy of basically everything, this folder and the git. I want it saved in the cloud. So if I spill my drink, I'm still good. So now we come to GitHub, right? So now hopefully you guys, I, I should have told you to do this if I didn't specifically, but you're all going to create a GitHub account. Um, and once you do, so how do we use GitHub to create a new repo, right? We click this plus icon, new repository. Um, we have to choose a name. So here, uh, I don't know, is odd lecture or get lecture. Um, so you name it. I almost never give a description. You decide if you want it public or private. Uh, I actually really would prefer if you guys did most of yours private um, so that future students can't cheat off you. But if you forget, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, but if you can do private, I would appreciate it. Uh, okay, so then you click create repository, right? Choose a name. Click private and create repo. Now the thing is, 
this VS Code Git running locally and this GitHub repo have no connection to each other. They don't know about each other's existence at all. It's kind of like modules, right? Um, we have to make that connection because our whole objective right now is to get this folder, make a copy of it to push to GitHub. So how do we make that connection? How do we, how does our local Git know about the GitHub repo? We have add to use, the origin. yeah, we have to use Git remote add origin and then the link. So this will be how we tell our local Git where GitHub exists. So you can copy this command right here. Or let me, first off, in your local Git, if you want to see what already is being tracked remotely, you can do git remote dash V and you see nothing. But now if I do this git remote add origin, origin is just a nickname for this link. I can call it whatever I want, but traditionally you'll, you'll call it origin. Um, and then the link itself is obviously the URL of where this repo exists on GitHub. So I click enter. Now Git knows where it needs to push a copy of this code to. And now we can actually do that. We're in a good position where we can push our code. So we can do git push. Um, where do we want to push it to? Origin. And which branch do we want to push? We're only going to use one branch right now. So it's easy, master. So git push origin master. And if all goes well, this code will actually, the whole project will now show up here in GitHub. So here's our code. Minus what folder? Hara. What folder is not in GitHub on purpose? Uh, the node module that we ignored. Yep. So this is what today, your assignment, this is what you're going to have to do. Um, you're going to make a, you're going to track your spammer project, make that into a Git project, make your first commit, make sure your got dot got or dot get ignore will already be there from Vite, So you actually don't have to worry about that. Push the project to GitHub and submit that link to get your point. And that's the very basics. That's all you need to know for right now in the course. But what questions are there on, on that? We're going to link it to Netlify for the... No, we're going to or... use a site called Render. Oh. Uh, the one that's super slow that we're always waiting on. Yeah. Hey, Max, can you go over Origin Master? Where, where did Master come from again? Master is the default name of what's called a branch in GitHub in Git and GitHub, which we're not going to explore today. Um, but you can just remember that that's the default branch and that's the main project in your Git folder. Uh, origin is the name we assigned to track the location of the GitHub remote address. So, cause local Git has no idea about GitHub. We need to tell it where to send the code. So for each of you, the value of origin is going to be different. And the branch is decided in GitHub, right? The branch Not is first decided in Git. First decided in Git. But then made a copy of in GitHub. So for the, the project, which I'm assuming we're, we're doing, we're uh, finishing Spammer through the weekend, right? And it's- Oh yeah, this is all, well, well today I actually do want you to do this process for your daily workshop, mm -hmm. but this has nothing to do with like submitting Spammer for real. This is just a little practice for next week. Um, but for when, when we're submitting, 
spammer or just to clarify are we submitting the github no link or the netlify i mean you're submitting it today but when you're submitting spammer for real it's the same process netlify okay is there going to be a, a different canvas project that we could submit the link to or are we just resubmitting it yeah so that, that's all the same that's untouched this is just a separate assignment so you still have your your spammer project it's right here so the, the two different assignments. So for today, you just want us to save what we have, uh, like create a repo for it. Yep. All the steps That's we did thing. just now. Yeah. And this is basically practice so that we can hit the ground running Monday. This is all just kind of like busy work. The, the interesting stuff is the building of the server, but these are the tools we need, the homework. You said to submit a link. Um, is it that link you copied from GitHub? Yeah, so the link will be this. Oh, that link. Oh, right okay. here. Your okay. your main repo in GitHub. And if your code, well, your code is going to look like your spammer code because that's what you're going to use. So if you can see your spammer code, you know you're good. And then from here on out, this will probably be the way we can share code. I mean, this is the real deal, right? So... Uh, even for lecture now, I can actually just get, post this link. Oh, did I make this public or private? I can switch that. Um, can I switch that? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, if I can find where to... Right here. <laughs> A lot of warnings. So now the cool thing is I can actually just give you this link instead of having to zip the folder in Discord. I can just paste this link into Discord. What are we, day, is this day 20? Day 20? Uh, let me verify oh, that. Yeah. yeah, someone said. I don't know, whatever. Uh, day 20 code now you have you can just click on that and see it all nice and um, I don't know it's just easy right Max so uh, when we upload it for the today's assignment we have to make it public then uh, I guess you should for today right because then I, I won't be able to see it if you don't but if you want to make it private, I'll assume you just did it correctly as well. If I see a link that says your GitHub name and then whatever, I, you probably did the right steps. But if you want to make it public today, that's 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 great, probably. Uh, Max, quick question: When you do when you do the git init, the git init in terminal, does it automatically? boot that up or do we have to download or, or connect something to the terminal uh getting it is just to get the party started with git tracking of local folder github mm -hmm. you completely have to sign up for create a new repo and then link your local git to github so so getting it is a function that the terminal has by itself already then it ha well you inst you all installed git already so you already mm -hmm. have that okay it's it's not from the terminal. It's from Git, but yeah, same same difference. Okay, got it. I just, since we haven't used it before, I was just wondering like if we had yeah. to download something extra now. As long as okay. you've been using Git Bash, which I think almost everyone has, you already have Git. Okay, yeah, all right. I think I I must have made everyone do it at some point. Uh, same thing for Node. I, I'm pretty sure we all have Node and Git already. What's the command to check? Oh, uh, well, if you try to use Git and it yells at you. Um, then you don't have Git installed, right? I don't know if there's a specifically a Git version. There we go, Git dash V. I'm pretty sure everybody has it because I would have, well, Mac people, when they use the terminal, it's usually like ZSH sometimes. So I might not have noticed actually. Anyway, super easy to download if you need it. You just Google Git and you download it. 
Same thing for Node. Uh, remember the docket ignore. That's probably the trickiest. And then right in there is the Node modules. But now you actually have in Discord my, my example right here. So, yeah. And uh, don't don't let me uh, be flippant about Git though. Like when I have to venture outside of what I just showed you right here, I'm sweating like crazy. Like Git it freaks me out. It's hard. So if there's any more questions for sure, let me know. Um, I think uh, maybe worth mentioning is uh, using the version control inside of VS Code. Maybe it's not, I think sometimes it's just a little bit easier when you're doing a git add. Okay, I absolutely push. never, what Roman is talking about is this GUI right here. I absolutely never use it, but if you want to, for sure, it exists. And if you find it easier. Uh, to me, it's a complete black box because I literally never use it. But it does exist. Roman, you're saying you like it a lot? Yeah, I do like it a lot. Actually. So I'm assuming that we can just, instead of doing git add and blah, 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 we've made changes. Can we make a new commit just by clicking commit? I don't know. We can try, mm -hmm. right? So, so would you like to stage all your commits? Yes. But then how does it know what I want to name it? Is it right here? Yeah, right there. You, you commit. Type commit message. Is or that they're it? in the box, actually. On oh, top of oh, the uh, it could be it. it could be up top too, but yeah, it's really wherever to be honest. <laughs> right here? Yeah, you could do it right there and then the check mark. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, like before you commit, there you see like the blue select box right there on top, and there's gonna be a message box. The blue you select could, box. Right there on your uh, your left you too, yeah too. you could put it there on top like the message oh, 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 oh yeah oh. my I didn't know that one either. no it's not letting me type here but maybe because i already put it here my no i can't type there um i think did you have to do it before you pressed commit yeah possibly or did it was it not there anyway my new commit right and then check mark mm -hmm. Save. And then if we check if that actually worked, you would have we can see we have a new commit. So if you like that more than, well, I mean, this is the standard to use the terminal, so you should get in the habit of it, at least initially. But that is cool that both exist. What is that head master there? Head is where you're currently on viewing. You can... Say we wanted to go back in time, we can go to any commit we want. Um, but that's a topic, I think, for another day because it, it goes into branching, checking out, blah, blah, blah. Wouldn't you need to push that? Uh, Absolutely. So absolutely. now, that's a good point. So now we don't have... See, this just has up to how do we use Git. It doesn't have all this code. So these are out of sync. So if we want to sync them, how can we sync them again? See how it stops at number one here? Get push. Yeah, so we have to re-push. you. Or Origin master. master. And now I click refresh. And it's there. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Other Git questions that aren't <laughs> checking out. Well, we could do a checkout if you guys really want. Um, any any questions though? Uh, I just have a question. Like, so I know when I started to code or whatever, and I, you know, I felt like the terminal and doing it this way is just like. You know, if you go to work and then you don't use terminal, they'll look down on you or think you're a noob. 
I, I just, but like, unfortunately, I think that's true. If somebody was using like the GUI during an interview for Git, I would be like, that would raise my eyebrow. That sounds awful, but it it, it would, it, it would, yeah. No, no I mean like like um, because I I ran into merge conflict issues a lot. It kind of like threw me off, and I didn't want to like even commit at all. Um, oh, with I, merge conflicts, you're absolutely going to use VS Code. Is it okay if you use the GUI though? Like, I mean, like for merge conflicts, okay? yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't even know how to do it without. Well, you have to use <laughs> VS Code because you have to for merge conflict. You have to edit your code and then commit it. So, yeah. Uh, I, I guess I don't know what you mean. Do you mean just editing the code for a merge conflict, or is there some special feature different than that? Oh, no, no, no. Just saying, like. Um... I don't like to use, well, I use it sometimes. I use it sometimes when it's like very simple, but I like to use the GUI. I, I got like a Git fork and then I, I can just kind of like look at the little segments and chunks that I want and stuff like that. I don't know, like, is it okay though? So this feature right here? In the real world, they're not gonna like discriminate, right? Well, no, I'm saying I wouldn't in an interview. Although in an interview, you're not gonna be pulling up Git probably, but I, I think you should get used to the terminal. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. On that same note, embrace shortcuts because it, during a technical interview, you you will be judged if you're like super slow and feel like you are rough around, like not familiar with VS code. So especially like cutting, pasting, copying, like those shortcuts you absolutely have to memorize saving a file control S. Um, I know it's hard, but you really should try to not look down at the keys. If you can practice like outside of code, I know there's fun like typing games. Maybe we could play sometimes. Um, so are you, what's the, we have seven minutes typing contest game. If you guys want to play type racer, <laughs> should we take a five minute type racer break down? Okay. I type pretty slow. Uh, create racetrack. Um, where is Discord? I haven't practiced. I've no I've seen this once and in someone's stream like forever ago. So Hi. So how do we put our names though? I'm not sure that you can on this one. Oh, uh, you can't? That's kind of lame. Uh, there's got to be a way, right? No? I think you have to make an account for it. Oh. Uh, okay, well, whatever. Uh, we can still play, right? So one minute to join. If you want to participate, if you don't, that's fine. Oh, is it happening right now? <laughs> the race has already started. All right. Don't tell me what's in. Don't tell me how to write. Don't. You guys cheated, though. I, I didn't know we started in this fight. It isn't your right. Isn't your life. It isn't your right to take the only thing. Did I win? No, I definitely didn't win. All right. So yeah, practice. Anyway, practice typing uh, if you can. Yeah.